Hi, gang. It's me, Dr. Steve. Normally, I introduce myself as your patron professor here to help you to think better so you can feel better. But unfortunately for today's video, while I'll certainly try to help you think better, there's simply no way I can deal with the subject matter and walk away feeling better. As many of you know, one of the most prolific Russian philosophers and geopolitical theorists today is a man by the name of Alexander Dugin. I've studied Dugin's work now for a number of years, uh, particularly his development of what's called the fourth political theory. It's fascinating whether you agree with it or not, but what it does is it outlines an alternative world political order to the three major modern political experiments of the 20th century, namely Western liberalism, Soviet communism, and Nazi fascism. Regardless of whether or not one agrees with the work, it is extraordinary. It clearly demonstrates Dugan's astonishing synthesis of a number of fields of study, such as cultural anthropology, political theory, ethno-sociology, history, philosophy, theology, you name it. Again, he's a top-notch scholar whose work has gained notoriety among academics all around the world. Over the weekend, Dugan and his daughter Daria, who's a fine scholar in her own right, were attending a traditionalist festival outside of Moscow. Dugan and his daughter were going to return home in his car, but at the last minute, he decided to go back in someone else's car. And then, suddenly, at approximately 9.30 p.m., to everyone's horror, the car Daria was driving in exploded, killing her instantly. She was just 30 years old, with a very promising career in broadcasting. Video quickly surfaced of a shocked and distraught Dugan arriving at the scene of his daughter's murder, and Russian investigators quickly identified the cause of the explosion as a car bomb deliberately placed underneath the driver's seat, clearly intended for Dugan himself. Now, uh, for Russians, and for particularly the conservative Russian world, of which Dugan is perhaps the most prominent scholar, the murder was uh, a monstrous outrage, to say the least. While no one has claimed responsibility, and while Ukrainian officials have publicly distanced themselves from the assassination, uh, the blame, of course, among Russian authorities is being leveled squarely at Ukraine and Ukrainian sympathizers. Obviously, the concern now is that given that Russian civilians are being targeted for murder within Russia, in this case, just outside of Moscow, the concern is that this will serve as a flashpoint that represents a very ominous turn in the Ukrainian conflict. However, as your patriot professor, I have to say that I think a very ominous turn has already happened. And that turn involves the utterly morally reprehensible coverage of this horrific event by the Western media. Now, if one were to merely peruse the headlines uh, written by these left-wing activists disguised as journalists, you come away thinking that Dugan was in point of fact the architect of the Ukrainian conflict. Look at this from the British Sun. Putin's war mastermind, Alexander Dugan, in hospital after dodging bomb that killed daughter in assassination attempt. He is now the war mastermind, according to the borderline illiterates at the Sun. CNN depicted him as the, quote, spiritual guide to Putin's Ukraine invasion, whatever that means. They went on to refer to Dugan as the, quote, high priest of a virulent brand of Russian nationalism. The Daily Beast referred to him as a Putin propagandist, completely ignoring that Dugan has consistently been one of Putin's harshest critics. He actually authored a book entitled Putin vs. Putin, where he scorched a number of Putin's policies. But what are facts when, ironically, you're nothing more than a propagandist for the liberal world order, as is the Daily Beast and all of these other ridiculous rags that pass themselves off as news coverage. If you're at all familiar with Dugan's writings, okay, reading these pieces written by five-minute Dugan experts is nothing short of cringeworthy. Again, these are people, generally speaking now, generally speaking, who have never read a word he wrote. They've never listened to a single lecture for which there is no excuse because he lectures in 10 different languages. He's an astonishing polyglot. 
All they seem to know is the ridiculous nonsense published on the Wikipedia article on him and other articles out there written by equally ignorant journalists who've repeatedly referred to Dugan as Putin's brain or Putin's Rasputin or the architect of Russia's new nationalist geopolitics. But there's two fundamental problems to all of this. One is a basic factual problem and the other is a reprehensible moral problem. Factually, all of these epithets attached to Dugan are flagrantly untrue. Dugan's influence on Putin or Kremlin officials is negligible at best, and he has said as much. Paul Robinson, the professor of Russian studies at the University of Ottawa, asked Dugan directly if he thought he was an influence on Putin, and Dugan told him that Putin doesn't pay any attention to him. This notion of being Putin's brain or the spiritual godfather of Russian geopolitics is a concoction. It is a fabrication of the Western media. For example, in every single one of the articles that you'll read today on Dugan's influence on Putin, you'll see plenty of images of pictures of Dugan. You'll see an image or two of Putin, but you will never see an image that depicts them together in the same room. And that's because I don't believe Dugan has ever met Putin, which makes you wonder, is there anything true about the Western media's coverage of Russia? For God's sake, is it even possible for them to responsibly report on Russia and Russian affairs? I, I'm seriously wondering that at this point. Dugan is an astonishingly prolific scholar who has a very impressive media presence, but who nevertheless has given theoretical and analytical clarity and insight into geopolitical dynamics that have been going on quite independent of any of his scholarship. In other words, Putin has an 80% approval rating, not because he's listening to Dugan, but because he's tapping into civilizational dynamics, particularly Russian and Eurasian cultural political dynamics that are happening completely irrespective of any one man's influence. So let's get that straight. Now, that's not, of course, to diminish Dugan's significant contribution to contemporary Russian conservative political thought. But in many respects, I would argue that Dugan is actually more influential outside of Russia in his contribution to a fully global political alternative to Western liberal globalist politics. But one does not have to read these sad excuses for reporting for long before one realizes that there is clearly an agenda to all of these scarlet letter pejoratives attributed to Dugan. The media uses all of this as a justification for, in effect, celebrating the murder. Take a look at this from the BBC. Ideas, and to the extent we can actually find an ideologist of this war, he would be it. So attacking him really is an attack on the whole foundation the foundational ideas that this war is based on. He apparently was intending to travel in that car and then switch to another car. Uh, so it looks like he probably was the intended target. Now she would be a, a logical target as well. She basically carries on his legacy of fascism. Um, she has been, you know, calling Ukrainians subhumans, calling for wiping them out like her dad has been for quite some time. So to hit them both at the same time would be an especially attractive way of actually fighting this, this, this battle on the part of the Ukrainians. It's possible that this was actually done by Ukrainian forces or Ukrainian agents in Moscow. It's also possible that this hit was carried out by, by anti-fascist, anti-war Russians. In either case, this has to give Putin pause, and it's certainly sending shockwaves to the Russian elite tonight. This is so you heard it yourself, Dugan and his daughter are fascists, right? <laughs> Even though Dugan's political philosophy is explicitly anti-fascist, that doesn't matter. Dugan and his daughter are evil, pro-invasion fascists, and therefore to hit them both at the same time would be an especially attractive way of fighting back for the Ukrainians and for the West. The Western media calls Dugan all of these names and gives him all of these titles, all of these epithets, so that they can draw this blood-curdling conclusion that Dugan and his daughter were legitimate targets. Now, what are the ramifications of all of this? 
Well, obviously, the Western media wanted to guarantee the galvanizing of Russian resolve against the West. They've succeeded in spades, okay? <laughs> I mean, uh, give them a gold medal on that one. When you, in effect, celebrate the targeting of Russian civilians, a scholar, a fellow who spends most of his time in libraries, along with his daughter, when you call that an attractive way of fighting this war, you have guaranteed that Russian resolve has been decisively galvanized against you. But more than that, I think this coverage proves, in my opinion, that the Western media has collectively become the monster they claim Putin and Russia to be. Apparently, according to our legacy media, if you hold an opinion, if you make an extended argument that goes against the so-called liberal world order, you are by definition an authoritarian threat that must be neutralized by any means necessary. The media has become the monster they purportedly abhor. And what they're putting forth as geopolitical analysis is morally reprehensible. And in my judgment, has permanently crushed any semblance of what's left of their self-proclaimed ethical high ground. This war is a tragedy through and through. There are plenty of horrors to go around. Unfortunately, as of this weekend, the Western media has become one of the worst of them all.